Hello everyone and welcome back to part 2 of the Explosive Arrows Bucket develop Plugin Development Tutorial. Um, in the last tutorial we identified that the uh, skeletons could also fire explosive arrows and then that needed to be fixed in our next version. So, to ensure that only players can fire the explosive arrows, we need to, we need an event to see when the arrow is fired, who fired it, and then when the arrow hits, we need to say, well, was this arrow fired by this person? Or was this arrow fired by a player and not a skeleton? So we need a new event. So we're going to create a new event, event handler public void on uh, arrow shoot and we're going to call it entity entity uh, shoot bow event event now all of these events can be found on the all of these events can be found on the J uh, java docs or just by doing a quick google search if you need to find an event um, an, an event type just do a google search it will tell you it's really simple so we're going to so when a when an entity fires something we're going to check it um, basically we're going to we're going to run the code between these two brackets because we've already done the register events we don't we don't need to do anything else um, this will automatically run so we need to check if the person firing it is a player so what we need to do is we need to get the entity who fired it the so entity entity Shooter, and we'll go event dot get um, event dot get entity. Uh, we'll change that to a living entity. So we now have the shooter. We now we now have the shooter. So what what do we want to do? We want to check if the shooter is a player. So we can use an if statement to do that. So if shooter, are they a player? So we can just do instance of player. So all that's doing is saying, um, so player, we'll import that. So what we're doing is we're saying shooter, is it also a player class? So is the class, was the variable shooter also a player? pretty simple and if they are we're going to update them with that information so now we're going to do player player equals player shooter now what we're doing here is we're basically saying well we're creating a new variable the type is player um, the type is player uh, the variable name is player and the uh, the shooter basically but the shooter we're casting the shooter as a player so we're turning shooter into a player basically or saying that it's a player um, now what we can do is we can now that they're a player now we've got this player class we can do whatever we want with it so we'll tell them let's tell them that they shot an explosive arrow so we're going to get the player method uh, the variable and we're going to send them a message now in here you can write whatever you want so we can put you just fired an explosive arrow so now we're telling the player that they've just fired an explosive arrow but even though that we have this this is not what we want to do because we want to we now want to prevent them well, we want to check if it is a player. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a list of all of the entities that are explosive arrows. So, and then what we can do is we can reference that list when we want to check if a player fired it. So this will be a little bit complicated, but we're going to go up and we're going to create a global variable. Now a variable is, a global variable is something that all methods can access. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a list of arrows that are going to explode basically. 
so that we can actually read it from two different methods. So we're going to create a public list, and it's going to be a projectiles list. Explosive arrows. There we go, we now have a list of explosive arrows. Now we're actually going to have to create the list, so it equals a new array list projectile. Now this here is just syntax, it's something that you'll, you'll have to learn, it's a bit of a pain I know. Um, so if we, but if we go through this, after I've imported all of those, we're creating a new global variable, so here's our global variable, and what does it equal? Well it equals a new list of projectiles, so a new array list of projectiles. Now what we want to do is in, we want to, in, in here, so if the shooter is a player, we want to add the projectile they shot to that list. So we can do explosive arrows, and we're going to add event.get projectile. So we're going to add the projectile. Uh, cast that to a projectile. So that's all we're doing is, um, so we're going to add this projectile to the list. So now what we need to do, now we go back to our on arrow hit event. Now what we want to do is we only want to create an explosion if the projectile is in this list here. So we can do if explosive arrows, we're going back to that list and we're going to contains our projectile variable that we added earlier. So if this list has this projectile in it, sorry if this is a little bit confusing, this, this one is a little bit more complicated. If it does, let's remove it from the list. So we're going to remove the projectile from the list and we'll put the create explosion in there. Okay. So here, here what we're doing is when an arrow is shot, we're going to see if they're a player, we're going to send that player a message, and then we're going to add the entity that they shot, or the projectile or the arrow that they shot to this list. Then, when an arrow hits, it's going to see if that arrow is in that list. If it is, it's going to remove it from the list just to reduce lag from the server or reduce memory usage. And then it's going to create an explosion. Because we're not using it anymore, so we'll remove it. And create an explosion. Now, let's test this. So we'll export it. Reload our server and we'll test it. So we'll switch back over to our Minecraft play and we're going to get one arrow and one bow. We're going to see if this still works. Did I screw anything up? You just fired an explosive arrow. Well that's good to know. So now let's fire at the sheep. Oop. And there's some more explosive arrows. Let's just screw up the map a lot. But now what we need to see is can skeletons fire it? Go back to our... And we're going to spawn a skeleton in. And let's set ourselves to game mode zero. Well, no, he's not firing explosive arrows now. You can't hit me. Ow. So no. So now we have an explosive arrows mod or plugin that can only be used by players.